first thing. Um, the first thing I believe I was called to do was learn. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. To learn, to teach, to prophesy, to give, to help, to worship. I've been called to be a praise to his glory. To intercede in prayer, the working of miracles and exhortations. Mm -hmm. I thank God. Amen. Um, I was asked to present references or events in the Old and New Testament concerning five topics. The first one, speaking in tongues. Um, in Isaiah 33, verses 17 through 19. I'll just read it. It says, Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty, and shall behold the land that is very far off. Thy heart shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is he that counted the towers? Thou shalt not see a fierce people, a people of a deeper speech that thou cannot perceive, of a stammering tongue that thou cannot understand. The next example would be in the New Testament in Acts chapter 10, verse 44. Praise God. Praise God. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. Through 48. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And then answered Peter, Can a man can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? The next example was Revelation. The example, um, divine manifestation of God. So in the Old Testament, the one example in 1 Samuel 23, verses 7 through 12. Praise God. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 23, verses 7 through 12. And it was told Saul that David was come to Keilah. And Saul said, God have delivered him into my hand. For he is shut in by entering into a town that has gates and bars. And Saul called all the people together to war, to go down to Keilah, to besiege David and his men. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him. And he said to Abathar the priest, bring hither the ephod. Bring him to the ephod. Verse 10. Then David said, O Lord God of Israel, thy servant has certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as thy servant has heard? O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And the Lord said he will come down. Once again, revelation is the divine manifestation of God. Okay, the New Testament. In the New Testament. Praise God. In the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 17. Seven, um, excuse me. Luke, chapter 1, verses 11. Chapter 1, verses 11 through 17. And I'll just read them as thus as I'm going through them. Chapter 1. And there appeared, speaking about Zechariah, and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah saw him and was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Praise God. Again, Revelation is the divine manifestation of God. Praise God. Knowledge is acquainted with facts. In, Gen in Genesis chapter 30, it talks about Jacob. Jacob had worked of um, servanthood for Laban for, for many mm -hmm. years. And Laban was unfair and unjust in his wages toward him. And so this is speaking about knowledge. That God had given him a knowledge. Okay. Praise God. Jacob chapter 31. 
Okay, verse 25. Thank you. And it came to pass when Rachel had borne Joseph and Jacob and said unto Laban, send me away that I may go to mine own place to my country. Give me wives and my children for whom I serve thee. Let me go. For thou knowest my service, which I have done unto thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee if I have found favor in thy sight, tarry, for I learned by experience that the Lord had blessed me for thy sake. And he said, appoint me my wages and I will give it. And he said unto them, thou knowest how I serve thee, thy cattle was with me. And for it was a little while that thou hadest before I came, and now is increasing to the multitude, and the Lord has blessed thee since my coming, and now when shall I provide for mine own house also? And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will feed again and keep thy flock. I will pass through thy flock today, removing this all speckled cattle. Okay, and the story goes on. For time's sake, I'm just going to jump down to verse 37. And Jacob took rods of green poplar and of the hazel and chestnut trees, and peeled white streaks in them, and made white appear as it was with rods. And he set the rods that had piled up before the flocks in the gutter, and watered troughs, and the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. And the flocks conceived before the rods, and brought forth cattle, ring streaks, speckles, and spotted. He received divine knowledge from God to multiply, multiply his flock, because he was, he was being cheated at that time. Okay, I'm going to skip down. In John chapter 13, St. John chapter 13 in the New Testament, just another example of knowledge. 13, John chapter 13, praise God. When I, upon looking at this, I looked into St. John's. This whole chapter speaks about knowing. It's mentioned over, thir it's mentioned over 10 times about knowing. And I'll just read 1 John chapter 13, one for time's sake. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of the world into the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them until the end. But there were things he did. He washed their feet that they would know. And it, 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 did you have a chance to just read John 13? Because it speaks a lot about knowledge and knowing. Um, the next one's prophesying. Prophesying is speaking forth. In Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 10, she just went over it about Ezekiel. God commanded Ezekiel to prophesy to a valley of dry bones, and he prophesied to the winds, and the, and, the, and the bones came together and stood up a mighty army. I'm just paraphrasing in that. But um, <coughs> that's prophesying, um, bringing something into being, speaking forth. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And... Um, in Revelations, skipping on to Revelations, Luke, um, Revelations chapter 2, Revelations chapter 1, the whole book of Revelations is Revelation. Revelation chapter 2, verse 3, um, excuse me, Revelations chapter 2 and Revelations chapter 3, excuse me. Okay. Talks about the prophetic. This is, this is the revealed Jesus Christ. This is Jesus Christ revealed. This is the revelation knowledge. In, Revel in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, it speaks to that. Chapter 1, verse 1. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show his servants the things which must come shortly to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Praise God. When this talks about prophesying, oh, that's the new part of the New Testament. Um, there's things when he spoke to the churches in chapter 2 and chapter 3. There's a prophetic word. I will come quickly and remove the candlestick. When you get a chance to go through them. Verse 7, I will give to eat of the tree of life. I will give to you a crown of life. I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. I will give to everyone according to their works. I will give him the morning star. I will, conf I will confess his name before my father. I will make him come and worship before your feet. Hallelujah. I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God. And I will write upon him the new name and I will come unto him and I will sup with him. This is the prophetic word in the revelation of Jesus Christ. These things are still going to come to pass. Praise God. Doctrine. The last